This is a really, really hard time for a lot of people. There is huge uncertainty. Many people are feeling financial stress. Uh, many people are feeling more isolated because they can't do the things that normally let them connect to people. And so one good that I think can really come out of this time is giving people a chance to either temporarily, in the case of fostering, or permanently, in the case of adopting, become a pet owner. Virtually every shelter in America had to close down, except for essential services, meaning most shelters were only taking in animals that were sick or injured, which basically took their population off the table. People in communities were stepping up to foster and adopt those animals. We went on Pet Finder one day when we were really lonely, stuck at home. The first one, though, on our list, his name was Frank, and he had this goofy look, and they called him a little pig dog because he would run around in circles and snort, and we just thought, that's our dog. Maybe two or three weeks into working from home that it got to a point where I looked around and was like, wow, I haven't hugged anyone. Like, I can't remember the last time I actually hugged a person. Research is showing that loneliness is as deadly as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So even outside of a pandemic, we need to consider loneliness as a major issue. But now let's put that into the pandemic when we are really forced to be socially isolated, to keep ourselves distant from the people that we love. And that's one of the wonders that pets provide to us is that we can pet them, we can touch them, we can connect with them, we can play and interact with them. Puddles has brought a lot of unconditional love and nurturing in times when it's difficult for us to provide that for ourselves. When you look in your dog's eyes, you experience an increase in a hormone called oxytocin. And this is a hormone that uh, researchers often describe as the love hormone or the bonding hormone. It's a hormone that makes us feel really good and connected. And what's particularly fascinating is your dog also shows that same increase in oxytocin. <laughs> the way that she looks at me, she just, you know, it makes you feel loved and special and like somebody is depending on you. She's helped me in many ways. She, first of all, is just a little ball of love. Also just to have kind of a, a project and something to pour myself into, I mean, if I'm taking my dog on walks and, and caring for her and spending time with her, then it's less time that I'm, I don't know, reading the news or just sitting and being anxious. <laughs> Everyone I think is finally being uh, lonely and sad in mm. these times and needing more connection and to focus all we can do is kind of look at the news and the boredom and horrificness that is that and the virus. So to have this little fella and all his little issues really makes it a great little reprieve from the problems that are happening. We think about, okay, what's gonna happen when unemployment runs out? What's gonna happen if jobs don't come back? And so what we're working on right now are strategies to help keep those pets and families. I am concerned that large numbers of animals will be given up to shelters again. Many shelters are virtually empty right now, which is wonderful. And quite honestly, that's how it should be. Animals shouldn't live in shelters, they should live in their forever home. And that's why it's so important for people to be very thoughtful before acquiring a pet. Should I go out of town? Like, what does that look like? Does she come with me? Do I need to get, you know, her certification to be able to fly? Um, if she's gonna stay here, like, who's gonna watch her? So I, I have all of that stuff put in place. It was never our intent to ever leave him at home. I think that we are in a position, luckily financially, where we can give him full-time doggy daycare to interact with other people and dogs. I worry that I can't bring him to work with me. I think we both work really well as a team, uh, so I'm not, I, I believe that we will be able to, to handle the transition. I have uh, friends in my neighborhood who can help pitch in and I can, you know, pay a dog walker or whatever I need to do, but um, I think it'll probably be, be pretty similar. We know that most Americans love pets. In fact, we know that almost 80% of American households have a pet. This situation has cemented pets as part of the family in more of a permanent way than we've seen 
in the entire history of the animal sheltering or animal welfare movement. And so that has been sort of the greatest silver lining that we've seen in all this.